I am so excited that my reintroduction back to the channel is about the new iPad event from Apple. So excited to hop back into it. I did take the last few months off for my maternity leave. I had a beautiful, healthy baby boy, but now we're back chatting about iPads, digital planning, and all of the fun things. I'm currently in New York because I got to check out all of the new iPads that were announced, and I'm so excited to kind of share a recap of the event and my first impressions of the iPad Air and the iPad Pros that were announced, as well as some of the new accessories. So I believe they started out the Apple keynote event saying that this is going to be the biggest day for iPad since its introduction. It was quite a fun, but also overwhelming day with information and new things that are coming for iPad. What I think is really exciting is that there have been new changes and new updates for the iPad Airs. And I find the iPad Air to be just a great value for an iPad, great all around iPad. It's very much, it's feeling more and more pro-like as the years go on with the updates to iPad Air. And I feel like it's no different this time with the new iPad Air for this year. Again, it's starting to feel more and more pro-like, especially since there is a new size for the iPad Air, which is one of the most exciting parts to me because I love, love, love the larger screen real estate. iPad Air now comes in the 13 inch size, which is super exciting. So you won't have to choose an iPad Pro if you can get by with an iPad Air and sacrifice that larger screen size. It's still available in the 11 inch size, of course. That's a great iPad for college, for note taking. It's the size of a standard notebook. I think the 11 inch is a great size, but again, I love, love, love a larger screen. That's why I tended to prefer and use my iPad Pro, but now we have that size with an iPad Air. It's also available in four fun colors. We have a new blue color and a new purple color, both very, subtle but beautiful and then we have starlight and space gray very exciting neutral colors there we do have the m2 chip now in the ipad airs the m1 lineup that we've seen from apple over and over again it's just getting better and better and better i think it's crazy the amount of power behind all of these chips and now we have that in the ipad air with m2 Again, still feeling very pro-like, especially when you compare it to the current M2 iPad Pro. That's the iPad I use and love every day, and now we have that with the new iPad Airs. It does now support Apple Pencil Hover, which is a really fun feature that we saw introduced with the M2 iPad. I loved using that feature, and so I'm so excited to see that on the Air as well. We also have the camera, the front-facing camera that was moved. Now we did have it on the landscape edge of the iPad with the iPad 10th generation. I loved that location of the camera. To me, it makes so much more sense for video calls and webcams and just things like that if it's on the landscape side. And so they did move that to the landscape edge of the iPad, the 12 megapixel front facing landscape camera. Chef's kiss, chef, 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 chef. We do have prices starting at $5.99 for the 11 inch and $7.99 for the 13 inch. Moving on to the iPad Pro, very excited about the iPad Pro because one of the main things that we got with this Apple event that we saw was a new design for the iPad Pro. It still largely looks like iPad, of course, but now the design is thinner, it's lighter, Apple actually says this is now the thinnest Apple product to date, which is very, very cool. The iPad is extremely thin. I'm honestly so impressed with how thin it is and how lightweight it is. I'm side eyeing my current iPad Pro and my current Magic Keyboard, and I'm just in disbelief how heavy and bulky it feels compared to the newer iPad Pros. So the 11 inch size is actually 5.3 millimeters thick. And then the 13 inch size of the iPad Pro is actually 5.1 millimeters thick, which I think is just so, so, so crazy. The finishes it comes in is silver and space black, which is really cool. And they actually color matched a new Magic Keyboard along with it, which I'll get into a little bit later in my first impressions of that. But just all around good stuff for the iPad Pro. 
The display is something a lot of people talk about when it comes to the iPad Pro. It's this magical sheet of glass and the display matters to a lot of people, especially for pro models, for pro users who rely on it for color grading with things like DaVinci Resolve and photo editing, just having those deepest, deepest shadows, those bright highlights, it's just great the advancements they're continuing to make with the display. One of those being the tandem OLED displays. So instead of just having one OLED panel, there are now two OLED panels to kind of accommodate this update to the display. So now we have two OLED panels in the iPad. Brighter highlights, deeper true blacks. It's very responsive to content in motion. Seeing HDR video on this device is absolutely incredible. Both sizes of the iPad will have this display, so you're not being locked into it or forced to lock into this display by opting for the larger size iPad Pro. The nano texture is also a thing that was introduced that is new on iPad. This texture is really great. It kind of adds just a very slight matte finish to the iPad. And it's great for environments that are very brightly lit or a little bit more harsh. It's just really nice to see, especially in comparison to a display without the nano texture, because that's something that could be very important to a lot of creators as far as photo and video editing and just making sure that you're really honing in on those colors, that what you see on the screen is what you desire for whatever you're creating. As far as my first impressions of the nano texture, personally for how I like to work and where I like to work, if it comes to using an iPad Pro, I think I would definitely prefer getting an iPad with the nano texture, but I'm just kind of thinking about my workflows and my work environments, the ones I find myself most often in, and I think they could really benefit from having kind of that nano texture display on my iPad personally for what I like to do and where I like to do it. Because of all of the updates that they are making to this iPad, Apple claims that it requires them to make a larger leap from M2. So rather than going from M2 to M3, they went directly to M4. This has four times faster performance than M2. So I feel like with talking about the iPad Pros, I have to bring up the new Magic Keyboard. So during the event, they did announce a redesign for the Magic Keyboard. And I used to be one of those people that thought that you really couldn't expand further on the Magic Keyboard. I thought it was perfect how it was. I know there were a few complaints about not being able to kind of spin it around, flip it around, or that you couldn't detach and still have a protective layer. But after using many smart keyboards with my iPad, I just feel like there's not a very elegant way to do that on iPad. And I really do enjoy the look of the floating design of the Magic Keyboard. They kept that floating design that we all love about the Magic Keyboard. We now have a function row though, and we have a larger trackpad with haptic feedback, and there are new colors for the Magic Keyboard that are perfectly color matched with the iPad Pro colors. So the nice silver that we have and then space black. I love the material redesign of the iPad. It is now aluminum and it's just so much more thinner and lighter. And seeing the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard makes it look even more like a MacBook. It's just honestly insane. And I think, I think the design looks amazing with the iPad. Perhaps even more exciting is a new update for the Apple Pencil. We did see a new Apple Pencil released a while ago that has the USB-C chargers for the iPad 10th generation but a lot of people are waiting for a more pro update to Apple Pencil. And so we got that actually in this event with Apple Pencil Pro. So Apple Pencil Pro looks like just the regular Apple Pencil. It still has the same kind of matte design and kind of the flat edge for charging. But now there is a new sensor within the barrel of the Apple Pencil, and this allows you to squeeze the Apple Pencil to pull up a new kind of contextual menu depending on what you're in, what app you're in. A lot of it is just for switching tools and things like that. 
And so that is a really cool feature, especially for things like note taking or digital illustration. It allows you to easily just kind of select your tool from that menu, or you can even customize the settings of your squeeze. So you're able to create a shortcut, change the color palette from there. It's just a lot of really cool stuff. And I enjoy having a lot of different gestures I can use to kind of speed up my workflow since I do use the Apple Pencil a ton on the iPad. There is a gyroscope now in the Apple Pencil as well. So there is barrel roll now. So whenever you roll your Apple Pencil a certain way, it kind of changes the shape of your brush. So with traditional calligraphy, you know, depending on how you're holding your brush, things like that is very well emulated on the iPad with barrel roll. I will say it took me a bit of time to get used to it and I think I'll only get better the more I use it. But again, that's another feature that will unlock so many cool things, especially for digital illustration and digital calligraphy, which is really big on iPad, especially with Procreate. So I'm really excited to see how different apps kind of hone that barrel roll feature. The new Apple Pencil Pro now has Find My. I know that a lot of people are requesting that in their Apple Pencils, which makes a lot of sense if you don't automatically like charge or attach your Apple Pencil or maybe you're using an Apple Pencil that doesn't have Find My, but the Apple Pencil Pro does now. So you can use Find My if you opt for that Apple Pencil. If it's compatible with the iPad you get, you might be getting iPad Air or iPad so that's another like fun little tidbit is that the new Apple Pencil Pro does work with the newly announced iPad Airs. So you can still tap into those same features, the squeeze function and the barrel roll on iPad Air. They also announced that the regular iPad price has been reduced to $349, which is really exciting. Another little entryway into getting more people involved with iPad if that's what you want to do. I'm really excited for iPad hardware specifically after today's event and getting to kind of test out these features for myself. So a lot of my first impression is just overwhelmed with excitement for the new hardware and seeing how a lot of these different gestures are going to kind of up level my workflow a bit to see how those kind of mend and melt their way into how I like to work on iPad. I think the new accessories are just other peripherals that make the iPad that much better. And of course, there are things like I haven't mentioned, like the new updates for Final Cut. We now have Final Cut Pro 2 and Logic Pro 2, and the addition of a new app there that are fun little software tidbits like live multicam and things like that that are also coming to iPad, using the iPad more and more as a pro level device, regardless of whether you get iPad Pro specifically. So I'm really quite excited about the announcements today from Apple regarding iPads. I definitely think this was a huge event for the iPad ecosystem and iPad consumers. And I really can't wait to see what other people think about the events all the new gestures and how they just incorporate that into their workflow and how they continue to grow iPad for us. So that was my first impressions and recap of the Apple event. Lots of fun, good stuff. And yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on these iPads for a longer time so I can give you my full review for iPad Air and iPad Pro. Apple Pencil Pro, Magic Keyboard, all of that good stuff. So if you have any questions or you want me to demonstrate anything, be sure to leave that down in the comments below. I'm so pumped to just dive back into iPad and show you all new cool things you can do with them. So until then, I will see you in my next video. Bye.